One of the first bad habits you'll want to remove from your life as you build self-esteem is your self-sabotaging ritual of constant apologizing. Saying sorry, pardon me, excuse me, or any other form of self-apology may seem harmless. You may think that you're simply being polite and that being polite is a good trait. Yes, Politeness makes the world a kinder place. However, in your case, apologizing when you have low self-esteem will feed deeper into your need of others' approval. In this lifelong goal of higher confidence and self-esteem, it is essential that you shed your desire for other people's approval. The only way of obtaining this characteristic is to play in the space of other people's disapproval. If hearing this makes you a little cynical, this is understandable. The entire point of this exercise is to stop you from apologizing superfluously in everyday situations. Uncomfortable situations where you may bump into another person slightly, cut someone off in a conversation, put your foot in your mouth socially, Forget to take out the garbage for your spouse. Spill a drink on the table. Show up slightly late to a meeting. All of these different situations, they'll make you feel the cringe of anxiety creep up within you. These are just a couple of examples. Really, the list of social flubs that can happen on a daily basis go on and on. When these social mistakes occur, saying sorry becomes a coping mechanism to soothe and comfort our insecurity. I'm telling you to stop effective immediately. And here's why. When you stop apologizing for yourself, two things will happen. First, you will no longer put your own self-worth below the person on the opposing end of the apology. And second, you will start becoming more comfortable in a position of dominance and assertiveness. Now, I'm not telling you to be so stubborn that you never apologize for anything. That would be just plain arrogant. Of course, if you were to mess up big and you're in the wrong, you should apologize. However, you'll find that once you begin this exercise, it becomes difficult to temper what kind of actions warrant an apology and which ones do not. So initially, Try as hard as you can to stop apologizing altogether. Then, after the first week or two, you can temper where the line should be drawn to utter out the occasional sorry or excuse me. I will tell you, though, that the less you apologize in general, the greater your sense of low self-esteem will diminish. It sounds like such a benign phrase, I'm sorry. But what does it really mean? It means I'm sorry for the action I've taken. It means I'm sorry that I imposed myself on you. It means I'm sorry that I've taken part in this world with my thoughts and beliefs. I have a really good feeling without even knowing you that you are not a horrible person. I have a feeling you approach life and your daily plan with the best of intentions. When you apologize for your intentions... You are stealing the worth of your contribution to the world. You devalue yourself. Stop apologizing. Stand behind the person you are and have the confidence in your intentions, no matter how they are received by others. You do not need their approval. Only your own. Now, having said this, I want to drive the point home even further with another modification of your behavior related to apologizing. I've just told you that this is an exercise in building your self-esteem, and you're going to completely refrain from all forms of apologizing. This includes saying things like, excuse me, pardon me, and sorry. However, there is one form of apologizing that you are allowed to use in one specific scenario. And it revolves around the restriction of another bad habit. Ask.
asking for permission. I want you to stop asking for permission. This generalized phrase, asking for permission, applies to a number of behaviors. I need to speak abstractly here because the situations in which you are asking for permission can differ greatly. Relating to the topic of apologizing, the key idea is that it's better to ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. You don't need to tell everyone around you every move you're going to make. If you want to go to the bathroom, then just go to the bathroom. You don't need to let the world know. If you want to grab something to eat for yourself, then just pick up something to eat. If you want to exercise, then just go exercise. You don't need to run every action you are about to take with other people. Take initiative without permission or approval from those around you. Can you see the correlation between asking for permission and seeking approval when apologizing? The mental comfort you received from each is parallel. Sever this dependency of approval from others. Get uncomfortable. And rather than relying on the comfort of others' approval, fall back on your own inner belief that you are in the right. In other words, put yourself first. If you do not believe in your own good intentions, then how can anyone else? Stop apologizing and asking for permission. Once you become cognizant of the frequency of this habit, you'll be surprised at how many times you have to stop yourself from blurting out, sorry, or excuse me. The removal of this unthinking response will in a short time make you feel more in control of your self-worth. You'll feel more assertive, even aggressive to some degree. Don't let that aggression scare you. Aggression is a tool. It can be used for good as well as evil. When you use aggression to assert your self-esteem, you'll empower your ability to affect this world and make it a better place. So stop the needless apologizing and start focusing on the value that you bring to other people.